<laughs> See, the, only, the way I ended up in my office, just and just give you a little background. My um, publicist friend, Teresa Sanders, told me a million years ago, when I, before I got this office, she said, Candy, you're doing million dollar business on a bootleg budget. Because all my meetings were at Houston's. <laughs> I don't know, like if y'all lived in Atlanta, especially eight years ago, even since then, everybody did all they meetings at Houston's. It was like, every time you go to Houston's, you would see somebody you know sitting there having a meeting. She was like, you cannot keep doing meetings at Houston's. Like, you need an office. And that's when I decided like, oh, okay, I guess she's right. And at first I was thinking about renting a spot, but then I was like, nah. I'm not gonna waste my money on some lease. I'm gonna buy a building. I found this spot and it's been home ever since. Welcome to the Candy Factory. Come on in. Hello everyone. It's bright outside, but it's dark in here. Well, this is, I bought it originally just to be able to use it as office space and a recording studio. And most recording studios that I know, it's pretty dim. So the space, you know, it's not like all bright and, and loud lights. It's just more just kind of chill. And I think it's kind of like my personality. I'm pretty much chill. You know, don't forget all that stuff you see on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm normally just chill. Okay. <laughs> But this is the entrance. Now please don't judge me. So I bought this building eight years ago. Actually, same time that I bought my house. I, I bought them like a couple months apart. I gutted this building. It used to be a club or something. I gutted it to make it into my office space and studio. So here, they just threw up some stuff in the front that is like candy ski trip. It's different. Um, posters from shows that I've had, and then somehow the TLC plaque got stuck up there. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Candy Factory, Alicia Keys is up here. And this is a painting that my friend uh, Toby made a long time ago. All of this is just all out of place. Don't ask me why. <laughs> so come on. Now, this is when you start actually getting into the building. A lot of people don't make it past that door. You dropping off a package, you doing something, you staying in there, you're not coming off through the building. All right, this is the recording studio. You say vibrato? Yes. Your vibrato is super strong though. Not for real. where the magic happens <laughs> it's a really great room the it's really time I, i'm like really been eager like i really want to change my whole space like i love this building it's been everything that i kind of wanted it to be as far as just like a little safe haven for me and my little team i really want to start like opening i'm thinking about maybe allowing some of the public to come in so i just wanted to like change it and upgrade it so you'll see as we go around some of this stuff just needs to be changed so anyway this is the studio room this is the main room right here is where I record. This is the booth. We have two monitors here. I don't know if you can see. There's two monitors there. And so you can like, what I like to do is, I like to put my lyrics. I have, I connect my computer. So my lyrics can be on the TV screen in front of me while I'm singing. And then the other TV screen shows what the engineer is seeing. So like I can see when he's editing, I can see what he's changing. I, if I want to tell him, oh, take that bar out, do this, do that. I can tell him all that stuff because I'm watching what he's watching and the two monitors, they're connected. But yes, I love the room. Although I'm about to upgrade equipment and change some things with the decorations. Right here, I don't know if you can tell, it's another window right here. And in the room on the opposite side of that, we typically used it for um, television edits. But if we had somebody who wanted to come and play drums or do anything, they actually could somehow, I think we had it to where they could go in that room and do that. Um, I've never used it for that, but yeah. This is another one of my favorite rooms. 
It's a favorite, but not because we haven't been paying it much attention. Now it's turned into storage. But it used to be the Candy Coated Nights studio. On Candy Coated Nights, our guest tells some of the craziest stories ever. Well, I got a call from Shawnee. Basically, the LA cast was kind of whack. And, oh, uh, <laughs> I'm just keeping real. You yes, asked me, right. here, so I'm gonna keep it real. You're always open minded, and we can talk straight up, right? Absolutely. Okay. Hold on. Uh oh. You, you got to get a drink. Let me you get my question. I, yeah. I can dress however I want to dress. I can twerk, I can dance, I can do whatever the hell I want. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make me a whore. I'm a woman, I'm a sexual being, mm -hmm. and I'm sick of double standards, and men always have an upper hand. These are, it's a set wall right here that um, we had built, and my friend Toby, she painted it and put like the curtains and stuff. Mind you, she loves teal, so as you see in this studio, I always just let her pick out colors and do stuff because that's not really my thing. So she put these teal curtains on the set wall, and that's why they're there. I didn't really come up with that. But when I say a set wall, it's just like we had a, um, a person who makes sets to just take wood panels um, and just build them and put them together. And then we really can like paint them, decorate them differently. We could change it up as much as we want to. We just haven't, um, you know, the fake shelves and stuff sitting on them as if it's a room. So basically when you're watching, you don't see the rest of the room, you only see this part. So it looks like, oh, well, this is not a good example because now you see these, these clothes on the rack. If the racks weren't there, you can go back and look at an old Candy Coated Nights episode with the TV, when we had the TV behind us. It was like the TV was there, we had our couches and all that stuff. So it's cool to have like a little production room in whatever building you're in. Um, this is Don Juan Studio. Da, 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 da. Okay, there's once upon a time, um, Carlos King actually worked out of this building with us, and this used to be his office. And he was the one who had it painted with these stripes and this um, red wall. And we just never changed it. <laughs> the reason why is because Don Juan refuses to allow anybody to decorate for him. He just wants to work and I hate it because the lights in here are dull. And one time I was gonna make him go out of town and we were gonna change his whole office up, add lamps and stuff. Cause I'm like, the way as much as he works, I feel like his eyesight has to be going bad working in this dark ass office. Like it's bright colored walls, but it's, the lighting is terrible and he doesn't care. He just said no. So it will be changed one day though. Uh, what I do love is that I'm, now that I'm in his office, I see that for his 2020 mantra, he used something that I said in a speech that I gave one day. What well, wasn't a speech, I was doing a appearance and I was sitting down with somebody and I just told the guy, I said, everything I want, I'm gonna get it. I feel like everything they said we couldn't have, I'm going to get it. You know what I mean? I Hold don't on. want you say to that, say that one more time. Everything you said I couldn't do or I couldn't have, I'm going to get it. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the crowd before we leave? I love y'all too. Thank you, I love you too. I want to say thank you. Thank you for being so supportive of what I've been doing over the years. Thank you for being a part of that dream. <laughs> and I kept repeating it. And I guess he feels the same way. Everything I want, I'm gonna go get it. And that's, that's some real life stuff, y'all, because, you know, we all talk about what we want and how we wish and blah, 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 but we just need to say, I'm gonna go get it. I'm not waiting on nobody to give it to me. It is what it is. It's mine. So, whoop. here's another darkly not decorated room. So this is, I don't even, I guess it always been like an edit room. So our other friend, Omar, he used to work out of this office and he used to edit like all of the little production stuff that we would work on. If you see, we already have like two computer screens um, and that's basically so that if anybody ever comes here and they want to edit um, whatever TV project they're working on, I mean, it, you really don't need a lot. It's a simple setup for somebody who does editing and 
we never decorated the room. So once again, I need to decorate and change it up. So, so many people walk down these hallways and look at the plaques. These are not all of my plaques. They're just some of them. Some of them I never even ordered. Some of them, they were stolen from my house once and I did retrieve a lot of them, but not all of them. Right there, a good old escape plaque. Understanding it went gold. It was a gold single. Um, our album, Off the Hooks plaque, it was platinum. I mean, it sold way more since, but these are some of the Beyonce DVDs from when she would do, you know, her concerts anytime that, you know, she performed some of the songs that I wrote or helped write. And if they're in the, the performance, you know, they'll give you a plaque when she sells, cause she sells like millions of copies of her performances. I mean, I guess people don't really buy DVDs anymore. They more so just like stream it, but you know, it's still a big deal. So pink. I got, what is it? I think that's a gold plaque, but I think your album, that's from my first album. I had two songs on there. Don't come around talking about that you love me, cause that love sh just for me. Got a new man, he's waiting out back now. What you think about that? There you go, look at it, it's a foe. Just because I let you go, there you go. Talk about you want me back. Like that. It eventually went platinum, I believe. Maya, her Fear Flying album, it went platinum. I had a song on there. The sucky part is, I don't even remember which one. I'm like, my memory be so horrible, y'all. Like, I know people be thinking that maybe I would know all the songs I've written. I really don't. Don Juan actually knows more about what I've done then I do. That is from Boyz II Men's album, Nathan Michael Sean Wanye album. It went platinum, I believe. Yeah, it went platinum. Got that. This is one of the Diamond albums that I worked on. This is in sync, no strings attached. I did the song It Makes Me Ill for them. I was hanging with the fellas, saw you with your new boyfriend and made me jealous. I was hoping that I'd never see you with him, but it's all good cause I'm glad that I met him. I was, I really enjoyed working with them. They were really cool guys to work with. Fun in the studio, very professional, just cool people. This, it was the best man soundtrack. It was a lot. Let me see, did I do more than one? I just did the one. I think, oh, I just wrote one on there. And what it is, is I wrote the title song for the movie, Best Man. You know I gotta love you more than anything. You are the center of my life. It was just tip for tap, a little payback. Let it go and leave it like that. It was sung by Faith Evans, and I wrote it. She's a songwriter herself, and I remember thinking when she came to the studio, a lot of times when people write, if they have a writer that's coming in to you know work for them, work with them, they want to collaborate. They don't want you to just write the song for them. Typically, they want to um, you know write on it. And so I was, I already had my mind prepared. I was like, okay, Faith Evans is coming. She gonna want to collaborate. So like what I used to do back then I would just always just like have like the hook and you know just like a verse already done so you know if they want to throw a second verse on there whatever then that's the way you know I just left it open for them to be able to work on it but I remember she was so cool like Faith Evans was so cool not that that was my first time meeting her because it wasn't but you know obviously this was a different way of us meeting because this time I was there to work with her as a writer and she was just like no girl you gonna finish the song just tell me what you want me to do and when I I was like, it was so kind of intimidating in a way because I mean, come on now. We already know that Faith Evans can sing her whole face off. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I didn't want to tell her what I think she needed to do. You know, like she said, well, what do you want me to sing? How you want me to sing it? So I would tell her the basic melody. Every time she kind of like, well, what else you want me to do? I'm like, just do what you do. So I wrote the song, I wrote the entire song, but she, she just sang her whole face off. So love her. Um, this is my group Escape. This is our Traces of My Lipstick album. It went platinum as well. Just 
That was one of our hardest albums to get through, y'all. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Um, this is from the TLC 3D album, and I believe I wrote on two songs on that album. Yeah, TLC is always great to work with. And there's another escape plaque from the first album. I used to like this plaque because basically it has the picture of our album on top and then it has all our singles, you know, and CDs beside it because the album went platinum and then the singles, I think all of them went either gold or platinum. So that's why they did it that way, which was pretty cool to me. Understanding, love on my mind tonight and just kicking it. All of them, they, it was just a really good album. kind of cool to see, look back and see our first time on the block and we was able to accomplish something like that. Here is another one of my other multi-platinum albums. Now that one says over 9 million sales worldwide. That was the writings on the wall, but it eventually did go to over 10 million sales, but I never went to order the updated one that was over 10 million, but we all know that it was over 10 million. So it doesn't matter. They sold so many records worldwide. I'm grateful to have been a part of that project and to have a significant part in that project. I mean, five songs. First we started our food. Taking me places I've never been. I wanna put your number on the call block. Have an A L and make my email stop. Cause you will bug a boo. You bugging what you bugging, who you bugging me, and don't you see it ain't cool. So I feel like I had a good little part in it. They were great to work with, by the way. Excellent, actually, because at first I didn't know how it was gonna go when I first went down there, seeing as though at the time, both of our groups were on the same label. I mean, So So Def was under Columbia Records and Destiny's Child was on Columbia Records, so it was like, technically, we both was on the same label. And that's always kind of like, sometimes you can feel like it's like a weird competition thing or whatever. So I really wasn't sure how well received I would be when I came down there to work with them, but they were very, very kind, loving, um, receptive, all that. Nothing negative to say at all. Just kicking it again. One million singles So You know, back then we actually sold CDs so people physically had to go and buy it. So I kind of feel like even better about what we did back then than even now, because now people just get streaming. If they if they just have their song on a playlist, they'll end up streaming a song by accident sometimes, but they physically had to go out and purchase. So that meant that every single last one of those CDs were earned, basically. E-40, I was blessed to be able to have a hit single with him. You and that. Yeah, so you're looking up for my ass in your jeans, got you I don't think you know what to with him and T-Pain, I love them both. Thanks Lil John, for putting me on that record with them. It was great. TLC, fan mail album, no scrubs. Scrub is a guy that thinks he's flying this. Also known as a buster. Always talking about what he wants and just sits on his broke ass. Obviously, it actually went a diamond as well. 10 million in sales as well. So once again, another plaque that I did not reorder once it made it past a certain point. But we all know it did, so it doesn't matter. B2K, honestly, I don't remember what song I did for B2K. Like, I really did not even remember that I've worked with B2K. How did that, wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's how many songs that I have. Like sometimes I have a song that's sitting around and the producer will take. Hello. Don. Yes. I worked with B2K. Yes, Last Boyfriend, it was such a main song. Oh, I did that? Yeah, if you listen to it, yeah. <laughs> Why I don't remember? Uh, I'm not your last 
She was born in 2002. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dang. Okay. That's crazy. I didn't even remember doing it. But all right. Thanks. Uh, Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. Yeah, y'all. My memory is horrible. Okay. Horrible. Okay. There are a lot of people that I've worked with and I don't even remember the session. There have been times that I've actually heard songs play. And I'm like, damn, that sound familiar. And it be something that I wrote. It's so terrible. Like, I don't know why I'm, my brain, brain farts. But at the time, like, I was so serious about my songwriting. Like, I was writing, recording multiple songs a day every day like i used to live damn near in the studio i used to always want to work in the studio on new year's day because i felt like whatever i was doing on the first day of the year is what i was going to be doing for the rest of the year so i literally would be like we have to go at least go in there like that's how serious i was about it I need to get back serious like that because obviously hard work does pay off. Yeah, with that being said, I wrote a lot of songs that some I don't remember. More plaques, Destiny, than um, TLC. Uh, this was a ASCAP Pop Music Award I got in 2019 for Ed Sharon. This is ah, Mariah Carey, Rainbow Album. I know I had a song on that. Now that experience was memorable because she wanted to work with Shakespeare and I, but she was in another country. Shake and I, we could not leave. We had other stuff that we were doing. So she and I wrote the song over the phone together. She and I both had other sessions that we were in at the same time. Matter of fact, I, if I remember correctly, I was writing the other song for Maya at the same time I was writing the song for Mariah. I was uh, would go from the booth, I would be like in the booth writing, um, writing that song for the other song, and then Mariah would call, and I'd go get on the phone with her and be like, yeah, yeah, this is what I came up with so far. I would sing to her like the, I, you know, I had the beat playing behind me, and I would sing to her like, okay, I was thinking maybe it could be like this, da 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 da. And then she would change like what she didn't like or whatever. She'd be like, oh yeah, I like that, I like that, I'll change this, change that. She'd be like, okay, well, I'll call you back, and then she'll be like, maybe we'll tweak this part. So I'd be like, okay, I'll work on it, and then we'll call each other back. So I'll go back in the booth, do the other song, then go back in the other room, try to twerk, tweak the song and make it right and be like, okay, okay, okay. So then she'll call back and then I'll have like another piece of the song ready for her to hear. It was so weird. Like I honestly, that song was ex-girlfriend. A lot of people like it, but I honestly wished that I had another opportunity to work with her in person because I just felt like I really could have given her like a smash had I been at the studio with her. She was happy with it, so. (laughs) So this is our girl, Esther. She works for the team. Esther originally was part of our production crew for Candy Coated Nights. We did that for a long time, right, Esther? Since 2010. See, they be remembering these dates, and I don't. I really don't. I don't. I be forgetting everything. She said from 2010, you would start working with me in 2010. So I was doing it before you even start working with me. So yeah, we was doing it for a very long time. So anyway, um, when we stopped doing Candy Coated Nights Online, I just told Don when we decided we was gonna hire somebody else. I was like, call oh, Esther. You know, see if she wanna come on over. This is the hangout area. This, once again, we need to change our furniture. And as you can see, the teal walls, courtesy of Toby. And those are her paintings as well. My friend Toby, the faux pro on Instagram, she is a faux paint designer, meaning she designs your walls and she can design your house or whatever. But she likes to really mainly focus on like walls and, and paintings and stuff. Teal is her favorite color. And that's how it ended up being the color here. Shout out to Man Cave Designs is um, Richard, who he's a he's really dope um, person that does like entertainment um, setups in people's homes, like equipment and all that type of stuff. He literally built this whole building out by himself in a couple 
workers to help. Yeah, so they did all of this. And, and he did this whole thing around the TV, which I like. Yeah, this is Todd Tucker's office that he never comes to. <laughs> He's always at the restaurants, but he has this office here. Um, you know, at one point, he was mainly focused on all the productions and stuff. That's why um, he has his office here. These are, this was another show that he was, he did him and um, Carl said that one. But yeah, he was an executive producer on that. And of this, I don't know if y'all remember that when, when she did her My Super Sweet 16. What 16 year old has a Ferrari? Not one. I think it's something else coming down the driveway. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Um, I don't know if y'all know this, but Todd actually worked with Oprah when they they shot something when they followed her around for like a year or something i don't know he went to australia with her and all kind of stuff that's todd and that's oprah and so here is the dance studio it's been so much stuff done here i mean like so much sometimes i see people tv shows and stuff post something i'm like wait a minute that's my dance studio in the background but this it's just a cool room. Like basically when I had the building, I just wanted, when I got it, I wanted it to be something that I could, it's like one stop shop, place you can rehearse. You can record, you can shoot your, you know. a meeting if you want to have the girls with the body paint and everything just walking around like talking to guests and like all that other things we can do that. and we have a full show to put and like i said all of that I'm, stuff I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying so if you were gonna do then i don't think it's off to do if you were doing if we can see it nate we can provide two people that are in there but it's not like something static they may be in a center roped off and they're performing all this. You're like, what the hell? I wanted all of that in one spot. So that's what we did. Yes. <laughs> I can't dance, but yeah, a lot of dancing goes on in here. Seven, eight hips. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. Then last but not least, this is my office. I love my office. I think it's cute. I mean, it's super bright. It's totally different than the rest of the building, but I definitely feel like it needs to be changed. Everything in here has been the way it is for eight years, and it's, it's time for an upgrade. It just is. It's like, it don't make no sense. I mean, I like these walls and all, but it's time, just time. Toby picked the colors. <laughs> she said, Paint your ceiling pink. I said, okay. And she came up with this blue wall, which it was cute when we first did it, but eight years, it's time. And you know what's gonna happen now, right? Jamie gonna pick out the colors. <laughs> I'm gonna do the speak on it, She said she's gonna do one room. I don't know, I'm just not really, I'm not really that girly girl that likes to decorate. And, I mean, I like it, but uh, I'm, it's not my passion. But I do really recognize when things need to be changed and updated, and it just does. Like our building, it's nice. Um, I bought the lot next to the building, so I'm like, I really need to pave that out. I'm like, should we add another room? Like, I don't know, like it's so much. So basically, the office needs to be revamped. And I think a great way to start 2021 is for a new look.